All right, so I think I cannot remember the, the problem, but 1964. Do you tell me that's the one of the chain? What is it? 1966. That's the one of the chain? Yes. Okay. So basically, we say that another form to use kinetics of momentum is I think the problem with the chain that they lift from the ground, from the surface with a force S. What is the, oh, sorry. Sorry for that. So sorry for that. So yes, yeah, so basically uh, this is the problem, the chain with the force S and then they give you the weight uh it is what you the weight per unit length is what was it five three how much three three which is three lb per inch no yeah okay good perfect oh, okay so that's important as well and uh, do we know anything else mm -hmm. we know the velocity is five oh. feet per second Velocity, uh, was it constant? Yes. Okay. V, two feet per second, and is constant. I think, did anyone in the weight, the force, the value of the force? Mm -hmm. but, right. You let me know what you want. I mean, this one part that we really just want to cover here, which I think is what I covered last time, but let's just restart. So basically, I just say that, uh, yeah. So basically, I think I just said last time that the real definition for the summation of forces, the Newton second law, is what? D D T of P, where P is what? Is what we learn to be as the linear momentum, no? Okay, so then this equation was given a summation of forces equals to d dt of mv, which is dm dt v plus m dv dt. Okay, and I think I kind of mentioned that generally the problems that we solve in uh, kinematics or kinetics us, the mass is constant. So what does that mean? That this term is zero and then this becomes ma, no? Okay, but in this case, actually will be different. So in this case, what do we know about the velocity? The velocity is constant. So this will mean that this term will be equal to zero to zero. Okay. All right, so basically now what do we have? If we look here at the chain, this will be equal to MJ or this will be equal to what? Uh, this will be W, you know? Okay, so basically what will be the value of the force? This is moving up, but we have, we have minus W, W, and I just call them this one. Yeah, I don't know, this one. Uh, it's not the same W, you know? So I probably will change the name in a minute when I figure out what is better. So minus W, let's call this one, Can I, call, can, I, can I make that change in notation? All right. Minus W, any other force in the y direction? Yeah, the most important. Yeah. Plus S, no? Will be equal to that. Will be equal to dm dt times V. Okay. So over here, I can replace the weight by what? If I look at this equation, I can replace the weight by negative W bar S plus F equals to dm dt times V. 
So this will give us that the value of the force is equal to what? It's equal to dm dt times v plus the force per unit length times the length that you lift up. No? So this is really our basic equation. I don't know if I follow exactly the same step last time, but probably we got to the similar equation, no? Okay, so in this problem over here, they give us the value of the weight, which is the same thing as the mass, no? So this will be equal to what? Uh, if you want, W, so W equals to what? Uh, w times S, but this will be as writing, Oops, sorry. This will be the same as saying, let's say, mg equal to, uh, wait, uh, no, no, wait. Wait. so basically we know, so we know weight equal mg, so m basically is weight divided by gravity, no? Then we'll see which one it is. Okay. So I'm doing that here. What do we know? We know the change of the mass or the weight with respect to time. But what do we know over here? They give us a change of the weight with respect to the distance that you lift the chain, no? So what can we do in order to eliminate the, the time term over here? We can say what? DM dt is equal to what? Um, DMDS times the SDT. And what is the SDT? It's the velocity. So at the end, this is going to give us that DMDT is equal to V. DMDS. Or is it, can I say that this would be equal to V over G DWDS? Yeah. Okay, so so that's it. Basically, that's it. So so that so we're gonna have that f, which is equal to the end. I'm gonna write the same equation: the end dt times v plus w bar s. This will give you what f would be equal to what. D -D -D Correct. DW DS times velocity plus W R times S. Oh, and we can do one more. What would be this term over here? Uh, oh, you cannot say. Would just be three, no? Because this will be W bar times S, no? So let me put here, this would be D W bar S divided by DS, which would just be three, no? Oops, sorry. So at the end, we're going to have F equal to three D square over G plus W bar S, plus three S basically, plus three S, uh, sorry for that, plus three S. So, so. Yeah, the reason I'm doing this is because somebody asked me, I told me before that they need to find what is the value of the force when S moves what, four feet? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. So now what do you find the value of the force when S equal four feet and V equal to two feet per second, no? So S equal four feet and V equal, and you find now what should be the value of the force.
Yeah, whatever that is, I don't care about the value is. Yeah. I mean, did you kind of follow the process? I know that was completely new, no, but did everything make sense? Okay. Uh, so let's keep doing problems. Uh, so let me pause this for one second. All right, so let's look at it. Uh, so what was the number? 17? 149. 149, okay. All right, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. So basically, let's say there is here, there is one of the trains that move like on a circular path. Oh, sorry. Here is one of the trends that move in a circular path where you know the radius here is 500. So let's say R equal 500 feet. And here, this is point B, no? Yeah. This is point B over here. And we have the corner system given over here to B. Yeah, well, X and Y. And then the other train is moving at a point here, A, on a straight line, over here. And uh, let's see, uh, the nearest, I'm going to have to look at it. So, yeah, so VB here. VA, sorry, VA here is going, if you want, south or down at 20 feet per second. And then what else do we know? That this one train over here, VB, is moving to 50 feet per second. And that value is constant, no? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so basically what they're asking us to find is the determine the relative velocity of A with respect to B. Okay, so over here, what I did is, and then it becomes because what I did is that since this is our main reference frame, I'm going to try to write the equations from here, no? Okay, so I'm just going to write a general equation. Let's say VA from point B would be equal to what? DB, since the distance between those two points is going to change, no? Plus velocity of A with respect to B plus omega cross s of a with respect to b yeah that's what we're going to be doing if you want basically that's what we're going to be doing but basically what happened here is that if this train over here was moving on a straight line and this one was moving on a straight line here you will not have this term no it's just because this one is moving into a circular path, no? Yeah? Okay. So what happened over here, let's see, so from the figure, VA is equal to what from the figure? Zero, negative 20, zero, no? Look at the figure. VB will be equal to what? I think it would be zero, 50, zero. If you have a question, stop me, okay? And then we know that the position of A, oh, I didn't put on my figure to respect to B, but I think it is 500. So 500, zero and zero.
So how we do how do we determine omega? So what we need is to find omega. So remember that in kinematics, we work it just like if this was happening and you take with the camera pictures, no? You take a different picture, all right? And then you say, at that instant, I wanna know what is the velocity and, and the acceleration. Okay, so let's say at a given instant, so let's say at that instant, All right, so let's say, I don't know if to put this equal, let's say equal to one, I don't know if that's good or bad, okay? But let's say at that instant, what do we have? We have V equal R omega, but we know that omega will be equal to what? V divided by R, okay? So then we can say that V will be equal to what? Uh, 50, no, because we're talking about the VB divided by 500, so this will give you what? 0 0.1, all right? So now we can go back to this equation here. Substituting into this one over here. Okay, what do we have? We're gonna have, I mean, let me rewrite the equation. We have plenty of time, okay? Equal to VB plus velocity of A with respect to B plus omega cross S of A with respect to B. So from here, we can find that velocity of A with respect to B would be equal to what? VA minus VB. minus omega cross S of A with respect to B, which this would give what? Zero, negative 20, I'm just gonna put X and Y this time. If you wanna put zero, let's put the Z since we have it. Minus zero, 50, zero, minus I, J, K zero 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 point one, and what is the position of A with respect to B? Five hundred zero zero. So basically, this is just going to give you velocity of A with respect to B. Let's say y direction. Oops, sorry, y direction only. Only one would be zero. You will get minus twenty, minus seventy. And this one will give you minus 50. So you get at the end minus 120. Feet per second. Yeah, I don't think it was that simple because of this. I thought, I thought it was going to give you a hardest time with this. But I mean, yes. Oh, that was the easy part. I was concerned about that part. <laughs> okay. Okay, I was concerned about this part. I was like, all right. Okay, so what about you do the second part, which is to find the relative acceleration, no? I think that's what it was. And remember, so what do you know? VB is constant, so what does that mean? Alpha will be equal to zero, no? Yeah. Huh? Well, we can do it together, okay, no big deal. So one, there was two 
Because the is increasing by two milliseconds. Yeah, but this one is just moving in translation. Correct? So the alpha will be zero that one. No, but good question. Good question. Good observation. Okay. All right, so let's say, I mean, let me just write the equation. What will you have? You need to do the same thing. Actuation of A will equal to what? Actuation of B plus actuation of A respect to B plus alpha cross S of A with respect to B minus omega square S of A with respect to B. And then I always forget that one. I think it's two times velocity of A with respect to B cross omega. I don't know if it's plus or minus, but I think it's. Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes, two, three minutes, and then we do it together, okay? What are you confused about? So, the relative speed at the instant being a It's two full length plus small of each Yeah. Well, she wants to bring apart the relative acceleration into its two times. Probably zero is just uh, no, 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 that's not zero is six. Okay. Yeah. So basically, over here, I mean, we just did it, but what did we just discuss? The actuation of A, we know that will be what? Zero, zero to zero, no? What would be negative because it's accelerating downwards, but it's accelerating. Remember the actuating, the actuation, mm -hmm. if it's saying actuating is positive, this end will be negative. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, but that's something that's, that's a common mistake, okay? Be careful with that. Then AB, we know is constant, so what does that mean? It's zero, okay? And then we also know that uh, the motion of alpha is zero, because it's constant. Okay. So basically, all we're going to have here is that the actuation of A with respect to B should be equal to what the omega square, oh no, sorry, actuation of A minus, uh, wait, no, plus omega square S of A with respect to B. See, I've been lucky here with the signs for once. Plus two times relative velocity of A with respect to B plus omega. So what do we get? We get zero to zero plus 0 0.1 square. Uh, what do you have here? Five hundred zero zero. So this is going to break into the two components by itself. So you're asking that it's going it's going to do it for you. Okay. Plus, here we need to be careful. You know, I mean, the a relative we found. Let me put the two here. I don't like to put it there, but let's put it there. Writing the relative velocity, we found that to be zero. Negative 120 on the y, zero, and omega would be zero, zero, zero point one. I think it would be better to write down the omega cross, but should give us the same thing. So here this is going to give us what? Zero to zero plus five, zero, zero plus. Two times what? Uh, 12 zero, zero. So finally, we're going to get here that the actuation of A with respect to B 
will be equal to what? 29 to zero. But for what you say before, this term will represent what type of actuation? Remember you say you want me to break this into the... Oh, uh, I asked if you want us to break. Uh, but you see, this is already break up, no? It gives the two both of them. Yeah, I mean, look at it this way, it's super fine. But basically this should be the norm, uh, I mean, it's the other way because it's X and Y this way. So the two should be the tangential and the 29 should be the normal, no? Yeah. So let's see, this would be tangential. And normal acceleration. Any question about, again, let me start 7147. Let's try to do this one. That looks like something you could encounter, no? All right. So let's read the problem together. I'll give you some time to solve it, and I'll solve it also on my side, and then we'll do it together. So let's see. So the coordinate system is fixed relative to the ship. So what is fixed is the ship that is moving, no? At the instant shown, so remember, this is just like taking pictures. The ship is sailing north, so the ship is moving on a north, so let's say VB. Let's just say the Y would be equal to what? Zero, five, zero, no? Okay, just moving north. Uh, relative to the Earth. Okay, and its angular velocity, and its angular velocity, Is so I don't get it. What is moving relative? What is moving at angular velocity here? Okay, so I guess this is not moving straight, it's moving, it's like the other one, but it's giving you an omega equal to 0 0.26 radians per second. Counterclockwise, so that's positive. Using radar, it's determined that the position of the airplane is, so let's say as bar airplane is, then 80, one to two zero, 6300. So this is ship. Airplane. And its velocity relative to the ship. So that would be what? Velocity of A with respect to B. Is 870 minus 45 minus 2. What is the airplane velocity relative to the Earth? What? Okay. What is VA, correct? All right, so uh, let me do the figure now. Basically, we are here. X, Y, B, A. So let me show you what I have. I only did this figure here. Let me add some stuff now. So what do we know here? This is moving here at VB equal to five. And looks like it's also some type of omega. And you know that the relative velocity of A with respect to B, and you know S over here. Oops. 
as over here is 1080, 1220, 6300. Okay, what I want to give you like before about 10 minutes and then we do it together. Omega is 0 0.26. Omega is 0 0.26, yes. Oh, now it's 21? Okay, sorry for that. Thank you for correcting me. I stand corrected for the value. No, it's fine. Sorry, I'm just reporting the recording because I think I recorded this file here, but the problem is pretty straightforward. All right. We have 10 minutes, let's just set up the equation for this one, okay? And then you can solve it, is that okay? I don't know why I have that stuff over there. All right, here we go. So let's just set it up, all right? And I will write down the equation, but let's just first discuss it. I don't see, here do you see multiple sliding contacts? Or only one? There are two. Um, two? C, B is a collar and A on the bottom is a collar. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't matter that the, that relative, the relative velocity of B with respect to A is going to be the same relative velocity as B with respect to C. So it's really just one, no? Right. I mean, I don't know what we need to solve right here, but the sleeve A slides upward at constant velocity of 10 meters per second. Determine the angular acceleration of the bar AC and the rate of change of the velocity at which the bar slides relative to the slip. Okay, so let me set up the equations, okay? Let me just do the figure 17, 131. I just set up the equations and that's it. So probably you have to, you probably the third point might be something about relative, no? But might be like the ones we did today, I think more like, all right, this, so, all right. Oh, what I don't like here is that they give you the angle instead of the distance, but it's fine. Okay, that's my figure. Let me know when you're ready and just write down the equations. I mean, here's only one equation, like the other one says. Are you guys ready or not? Okay, so what could be here? What is the only fixed point that you could use as your first reference frame? B, no? We have B over here, so you could write what? From point B, you could write the velocity of which point? A. So now, is the distance between B and A constant? No. So that means you're going to have the relative term. So you have velocity of A equal to VB plus relative velocity of A with respect to B plus omega cross S of A with respect to B. I'm going to be fast to finish. What do we know from the velocity of B? Zero. Zero. Okay. Now, maybe this is yeah the only part that might be tricky is that V A B is a vector, which we don't know the magnitude, but do we know the direction? Yeah. It needs to be along the member A B, no? So I don't care if it goes up or down, but let's say it goes up. So if it goes up, what will you have then? L, yeah, so it's one cosine 30, L sine 30 and zero, no? All right, so basically this is gonna give you now that you're gonna have VA is equal to the relative velocity, so the magnitude, which will be the unknown. 
cos 30, which is square root of 3 divided by 2, sine 30, which is 1 half, 0 plus i j k 0 0 omega which you, you don't know and what is the position of a with respect to b cosine 30 sine 30 i mean i'll let you solve it but basically now what do you have this is how many equations you have here one on the x one on the y no how many unknowns you have? VAB. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm VA. You're correct. VA is, anybody here, VA would just be equal to 0, 10, 0, no? So now you have two equations. Two unknowns. So what can you do? You, I mean, you solve the system of two equation solutions. Okay, so I know for you, I mean, we're getting close to the exams. And I know you you tell more about the grade than the knowledge you'll get in the class, which I don't get, but uh, for me, it's different. No, it's the other way around. So I think I probably said the same sentence as first day of classes is that I have zero control about the knowledge working into this class. Okay. I cannot control it. But basically, I have control for a full semester before you leave after the final exam, no? Okay? So what I want to say is that, obviously, you didn't do good at the beginning, but at the end, I see that you know the, the, that you have the knowledge. I try to help you as much as I can, okay? When I grade the final exam, I don't put a numerical, but I don't put, you got a, whatever, a 85 or 75 or whatever, no, 100, whatever. I look at the exam and I say at the end, I put the front page, my impression of these students is whatever, B, A, B, C, no? Okay. And then when I go to put the final grade, I work as much as I can in that direction. Okay. So, you know, I'm not going to say that you have a D average, you're going to double an A, but you probably going to, you can, if you do really good, you, end, you might even end up with a B, you know, if it's outstanding and say, okay. This is a final exam. It's showing me that I really knows the knowledge, no? Okay. So grades are important, but to me, it's more important that you show me that you understand the material. But it also works on the other way, okay? Mm -hmm. So be careful. So let's say you had a B average and your last impression is that it's a D or something like that, you're probably going to end up with the D or the C. You see what I mean? So be careful with that. Don't think because you have a good uh, average in the class that you can slide on the final exam. It's the most important exam. I mean, I have what? 30% to decide about your grade? Yep. It lets me move whatever I want, no? Okay.